morning and welcome to my studio. How many singles to use at wet set is an important question for a tapestry weaver. I'm going to explore this question today with a beautiful Swedish singles yarn. If you're interested in more free training videos, make sure to visit my website and blog at www.rebeccamezoff.com and uh, sign up for my newsletter because I send out a lot of information that isn't in the blog. Also, I'm now teaching online, so check out my online classes. Maybe one of them is for you. Hello. I'm going to do a little experiment today with a yarn called Faro. It's a Swedish yarn, and actually I don't know if that's how you say it. It's F-A-R-O, and there's some little um, Swedish extra marks over the letters. And my biggest apologies to my Swedish friends. Maybe you can help me figure out how to say it. This yarn is almost identical in size to the Harrisville singles that I use. Um, Harrisville spins them, uh, does a special spinning run for this single, and it isn't available commercially. So this, this Swedish yarn is a good substitute for that um, singles yarn that I use. It's a little higher twist, and it's a little bit shinier than the Harrisville. It's a very, very nice yarn, and I do recommend it. It dyes pretty nicely. And um, I'm gonna try today a little experiment with um, eight ends per inch using three strands of the faro versus four strands. I've had some students ask me whether um, they should use three or four strands. I use this yarn at three strands at 10 ends per inch on my floor loom. So I want to do a little experiment to see whether three strands or four strands will work better at eight ends per inch. And I'm also going to try two different ways. One, plying the single strands on a spinning wheel and the other just laying them in without twisting them together and we'll see if there is a difference. Let me just show you up close the label of this yarn. Um, F-A-R-O and this came from Glamacra USA which sells this yarn. It is um, about 600 meters to three and a half ounces. So it's pretty fine yarn. You can see it's quite thin. I'm going to start weaving here in two sections. This side has three strands woven um, used together and this side has four and we will see which one wins. This is eight ends per inch this warp. Still weaving. Still weaving. I've now woven ten sequences on each side here and as you can see this is the side where I have three ends in a bundle and this is the side that I have four and I'm just going to mark these as being ten sequences because of course as you can tell the three doesn't have as much yarn in it and so it packs down more and the four of course is there's going to be a height discrepancy here because the four has more yarn in it. It does look like both of them are covering the warp so we will see how the fabric differs from side to side. Still weaving. All right, now I've done 30 sequences of um, three plies of the faro and four plies of the faro. You can see that, of course, the four ply one comes up higher because there's more fiber in there. I like to ply single ply yarns on my spinning wheel and so I'm going to do this again with the plied yarn and see if there's any difference. But it looks like both the three and the four are covering at eight ends per inch really well. And so I think you could probably use them either way. I'm still weaving. I've now put in a part of um, the same thing, three plies over here and four plies over here. This, um, both of them have now been plied on a spinning wheel so you can see how the yarn is much um, more twisted together than it was when I just laid the, the plies in without twisting them on the spinning wheel. I've now woven um, 50 sequences of each color and you can see this is the side with the three ply and this is the four ply. Um, the difference between the ones that I plied on the spinning wheel, these darker purples and the lighter purples, um, is that it's a lot easier for me to control the surface of the fabric when I ply it on the spinning wheel. So when it's spun together, I don't get the little tiny loops that you see sticking out here on the bottom. Um, this is a flatter surface and this is a little bit uh, lumpy just because it's really hard to get those 
uh, four different plies of yarn all to lay down together when they're not spun. Um, that said, this is still very flat, and if, if I were doing something with a lot of texture and I was changing colors a lot, plying them on the spinning wheel is not that convenient, and just laying them in like this um, with the different color mixes is a great way to do it. You won't see these texture changes anyway if, if the colors are very diverse in your bundles. So I was really pleased with this experiment, and I think you can weave this yarn at either three or four plies at eight ends per inch. I use this weight yarn at 10 ends per inch, and I, I use three plies. I'm not sure I could weave at, with four plies at 10 ends per inch, but at eight, it is working well. So your choice whether you use three or four is probably whether you want to um, have more detail. If you use three, um, you can see that I have to put in a lot more sequences to um, fill up as much as the four, so you probably could get a little bit greater detail with the three ends per inch, but you'll have to weave a lot more. It will take you longer. This you will weave faster. Um, it will still cover, but you can do more color mixing if you have four ends together. So I finished my little experiment with the faro yarn, and I feel like there are times where you would want to use three plies at eight ends per inch or four plies at eight ends per inch. This is something um, that you will want to try sampling depending on what it is you're trying to achieve. Um, at three ends per inch you have to do a lot more sequences to fill in the area because there's less yarn in there so it doesn't um, come up as high. But if you wanted a lot of detail in your piece you might go with three ends per inch. Now four ends per inch of course you don't have to weave as much, it comes up quicker. Um, and it also covers the warp just fine. Both of them look lovely and there's no lice and um, I think either one is a good choice. The difference between plying the yarn, which I did with the darker purple, and just laying it in straight, which I did with the lighter purple, is that it's, it's harder to get a real flat texture if you don't ply it. So I, of course, am always looking for that nice flat look and so the plying of the yarn allows you to do that. Um, when you just lay them in straight, it's hard to get all those little pieces of yarn to lay together, and so there are tiny little bumps on here. If you were doing something with a lot of texture or lots of color changes, it, I don't think it would matter. Um, and of course, it's much easier and less time consuming to just lay the yarn in instead of uh, plying it on the spinning wheel. Many, many people weave tapestry that way. The last thing we're going to look at is the hand of the fabric, whether it's more flexible at three plies versus four. Now that this is off the loom, let's look at the kind of fabric created with the faro between the three plies and the four plies. Here's the side where you saw it on the loom. So the three was on this side and the four was on this side. And you can see from these little markers I have here on the side, I did um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 sequences of each color. Same thing over here, but with three plies, of course, it used up much less space than with four. On the front side here, same thing. This is the three ply, this is the four ply. And the hand of the fabric is slightly different. The, the three ply here is a little bit more pliable. It moves a little bit more, it's a little bit thinner. Um, the four ply is a little bit sturdier, but they're not significantly different. So I don't see a big difference in the hand of the fabric in which you use three or four ply. So I think the decision rests on how much variety you need with being able to use four plies at once. You can have a bigger color uh, variety. And um, if you use three plies, you'll be able to get a little bit more detail, although you'll have to weave a lot more. And now I'm teaching online. I'm having a lot of fun teaching my online classes. Make sure to check them out. And if you enjoyed this video, share it with all your friends. 